What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1 and today we're going to be talking about top 5 reasons why you might get picked on in jail. And you know there's a ton of reasons why someone might get picked on, but the ones that we're going to be talking about today to me are more important because they will keep on picking on you for these reasons the remaining time that you're in the block, okay? Until you leave, they will pick on you if you've done these things. But first, before we get into that, I want to say a big thank you to Stone86. Uh, he sent my dad a buck. <laughs> Literally sent him a dollar for a cup of coffee from McDonald's, but that's the first gift my dad got from one of the audience members. Salute to you, Stone86. And he's been a loyal supporter since a very long time, so I appreciate that, man. And Prayed Up. Prayed Up sent me a bunch of gifts, a bunch for my kids, my wife, and for me. And I'm not going to show off the ones that uh, she sent for the kids, it's stuffed animals, a bunch of things. But I am going to show you what she sent me. Check it out, y'all. I don't know if y'all know what that is. Let me, let me hook this up really quick. Hey, bear with me. We'll get into the top five reasons in a second, all right? Just bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. This means a lot to me now. Got me Aliens and Predator light. And they're USB and battery powered. So if I ever... I'm out camping or something. I could just take these puppies with me. It's like a lantern. Huh? Yeah. That's nasty, ain't it? Woo! I love it. I love it, Prayed Up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tell you what. Love it. I absolutely love it. I'll leave that on right there. Also sent me a Predator one. Isn't that, isn't that sweet as hell, man? Love it. Damn, my audience members are amazing. And you know, the door is almost completely filled up. You know what I mean? The door, for anyone who doesn't know, is where I sign everyone's name who has donated during my live streams. It is almost completely full. Memories, ladies and gentlemen. We are making memories. I will always look at this door and remember a lot of y'all. You know what I mean? Some people I can't really remember, but a lot of the names on this door, y'all have been supporters since the beginning. You know what I mean? It means a lot to me. But anyways, let's get into the topic at hand. Oh, and at the end of this, we gave Lucia a little bit of a makeover. And I'm going to show y'all what the Bulldog looks like for Valentine's Day, ladies and gentlemen. So stay tuned for that at the end of this video. But uh, yeah, top five reasons why you might get picked on in jail. And you know, I wrote, I wrote them down. I wrote them down. You know, there's a lot of reasons. I could have wrote down a lot of reasons. But if you do any of these things, you know, people are going to pick on you every single day just about. And I got a couple stories to go with. We're going to start from five to one, one being the worst, okay? Number five. This is pretty much in general. And I'm going to answer a couple people's questions that have been asking me in the comment section on this one as well. Number five. If you look soft or weak, if you're fat, or if you're skinny, you know, some people ain't gonna pick on you if you're skinny, but if you're fat, I've seen people get picked on because they're fat. They won't even invite them to a cook, you know, to, to make a spread. They're like, man, don't, we, if your nickname is Polar Bear, okay, for a reason, I, I remember this guy, and if you watch my content, man, because you never know, they could probably be watching. I mean, there's this guy named Polar Bear. He was huge, man. I never wanted to cook with him because he didn't eat normal, okay? Big people, they eat big. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, you know, it's, they can't just take one chip, dip it in, and eat, and let everyone take a chip. No, they're just going to go in. You know what I mean? So I never, no disrespect to all the heavier folks out there, but I never cooked spreads with heavy individuals. <laughs> Even my, they were my homeboys, because they always destroyed the swoles. But anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, if you look weak or soft, okay? Like I say in many of my videos, people can, you know, even if you're not weak or soft, if you just look it, okay, it's just like buying a car, you know, are you going to buy a car that's rusted up and don't look no good, paint jobs bad, you know, you're not going to buy a car. Same goes for, you know, uh, bullies and stuff like that. They ain't going to pick on someone that's looks like they bench press, you know, 285 on a regular basis. They're not going to, they're not going to do that. They're going to pick on someone that has spaghetti noodle arms. Uh, you know, weak as hell look. So number five, if you walk in the door and you're looking weak and soft, you know, chances are you're going to get preyed upon. And that's just the simple facts of life. You don't have to be in jail, prison, whatever. You can be in school 
in this stuff will happen to you at the workspace you know this stuff really happens so yeah number five it's not that exciting but it, it's the truth what well, how you look you know how you look and how you act now number four if you buy food before hygiene you might think it's something very simple and you know no harm no foul but in jail okay look I remember in the block that I used to be in, almost every block I was in, the, the correctional officers would come in on store day and they would lock everybody down. Okay, they would usually lock everyone down, and except for a couple places, they didn't lock them down. But all eyes would still be on you. You know, whether you have to go to the little window outside in prison and get your stuff, people are still eyeballing your bag to see what you're getting. You know what I mean? But mainly in jail is what we're talking about today. When the COs come in to deliver canteen, they usually lock down the whole block and they call you down by your name, okay, with your little bag or whatever. But the thing here is when you bring down the bag, everybody's looking at you. You know, there ain't nothing else to do but to watch people get their freaking canteen unless you're sleeping or something. They come early in the morning, you might get away with it. But for the most part, people are staring at you, okay? They're seeing what you're getting. They might be plotting and planning on schemes to come and get you. But yeah, food before hygiene. If you buy 20 honey buns, 20 bags of shebangs, some soda, whatever the case is, and no, no kind of hygiene, no deodorant, no toothpaste, no nothing, and you just came into the block and all you have is state-issued toothpaste and deodorant, man, not only is everyone going to joke on you that saw you get your commissary, but when you step foot in that cell and unload your bag and your cellmates see it, look, jail's got, man, gossip central, you know? They're going to joke the hell out of you just because you didn't buy no damn hygiene. For real. Take it from me, ladies and gentlemen. If you happen to ever get locked up, or if you have a friend that's about to get locked up, please warn him and tell him, buy some hygiene with that food. If you ain't got enough for both, then get the hygiene first. It's going to save him a lot of trouble. A lot of individuals will pick on that person just because he didn't buy no hygiene. Mark my words. Now, number three. And I ain't going to lie, man. I got picked on in this way my damn self. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you, man. But check it out. This is for all the phone riders, all the jack riders. Everyone that goes to jail and uses the phone nonstop calling their girl. They won't leave their girl alone calling all damn day because that's all they got to do. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to lie. During my first bid, man, I was, you know, I was blowing my old lady's phone up. After 4 p.m. when she got home from work, I stayed on the phone almost all night. And it wasn't because I was insecure or anything like that. It was just because I enjoyed being on the phone. I had her doing all kinds of stuff for me, looking up names, looking up artwork. I was getting her to do all kinds of stuff, planning my future. But you see, your fellow inmates don't look at it like that. They look at you like you're worse. You know, you're worse as hell. And this is something that you should never do in jail because you're guaranteed to have your homeboys or someone else say some sideways stuff. And it'll get you mad, man. It'll get you a little heated. You know what I mean? It might even get you thinking a little bit about your old lady. Let's say you go to the phone every day, nonstop, back and forth, back and forth, and all of a sudden you go and guess what? There's no one answering. You hang up the phone. You don't leave the phone. You hang up the phone and you call right back. No answer. You hang up the phone, you call right back. No answer. You hang up the phone, you call right back. No answer. Well, guess what? There's probably about 20 inmates watching you hang up and dial again. And they're going to say this. Ooh, she's with Jody, bruh. She's with Reversible Starter Coat. I know y'all heard those phrases. There's a name for this individual in every jail, county, and prison. Okay? The man that might be sleeping with your old lady. The reason why she's not answering the phone is because she's probably with another man. You know, that's the worst thing you want to think of. When you're locked up but it happens to the best of us i mean i'm not gonna lie i felt victim to thinking like that before you know but this is the thing when you leave the phone and you come back immediately like 20 seconds later and dial it again look you're guaranteed to get picked on by your homeboys or whoever you know by that for that simple reason they're gonna be like man she's with homeboy she's with this that she's doing that and that's liable to get you know get caught up in the mix start fighting because some dudes aren't as playful as old death, you know? When I'm playing with my homeboys, I can understand the joke's a joke, okay? But some individuals don't. And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll throw some hands over that crap, you know? They're really, 
really caught up in the mix. They're really, their hearts really hurt because their old lady's not answering the freaking phone. They really think that she's out doing something. More than likely, she is. You know, that's just the facts of life. Ladies, y'all can say y'all are faithful. You know, I've heard the phrase, uh, women are like camels. You know, they can go a long time without water. You know, but, you know, the other way around. A long time without sex. You know, but you can say it all you want, ladies. But I've seen it in action. I've seen uh, girls out in the streets while their man's locked up. I've seen it in action all too many times. I mean, and a lot of these women, they ain't loyal. And that's a fact. You know what I mean? But there's a lot that are. Don't get it twisted. Don't, don't crucify me, ladies. Okay? Don't do it. I'm just stating the facts. There are some individuals out there. When they ain't answering the phone, it's because they're locked up with Jody. Now, number two. And there's a lot of things that could fall in this department. All right? If someone calls you a crazy name. If someone smacks you. If someone punches you. If someone says something about your mom, if someone steals from you and you do nothing about it, if you do absolutely nothing about it, man, everybody in the whole block is going to carry your ass until you leave. That's, that's just the facts. They are going to pick on you night and day. If you allow any of those things to happen to you while you are in jail, if you do nothing, that's probably the worst thing you, you could possibly ever do. The only thing really that could be worse than that is, you know having some kind of sexual charges you know stuff like that but if you get smacked man and this i'm gonna tell you a story where this guy he got smacked and he also did something right before he got smacked uh it's gonna fall into number one on the list but if you get smacked and or beat up or or talk too disrespectfully or get stuff stolen from right blatantly right in front of you and you do nothing about it man I'm sorry, but you're going to have a super hard time in lockup, okay? Even if, you know, it's hard for me to sit here and say, hey, you got to do something about it. But, you know, some people out there, you know, if, if they threw a punch at the guy who did it, it wouldn't even phase him. You know, he's liable, he's liable to get his jaw, nose, and teeth broke just because of his pride. So I can't sit here and tell you what to do, but I can tell you this. This is what's going to happen if you don't do nothing at all, okay? They're going to keep on doing it. And not just them, but probably 60% of the people all around you are going to pick on you and take advantage of you. You know what I mean? Sometimes, even if it's scary as hell, you got to stand up for yourself, dog. You know what I mean? And that's just the facts of life. Now, number one on the list, most important, and I'm not going to lie, I've done it. I've done it. I'll tell you a story about it. I've done it. No one saw me do it, but I did it. Crying in jail. There's no crying in baseball. Well, there's no crying in jail either, but old death cried in jail. First, I'm going to tell you a story on when I cried. The only, no, two times. I cried two times in jail. The first time was when I gave my life to Christ. I got down on my knees and I prayed and I had this overwhelming feeling. I, it was unbelievable. And I started crying uncontrollably. And I wasn't sad or nothing. It was tears of joy and comfort. That's the best way that I can explain it to y'all. You know I mean, that was the first time that I cried. And I know a lot of people do not believe in the almighty Lord Jesus Christ. But that was the first time that I cried. I remember, man. And the second time that I cried, okay? And this was on my second bid going to prison. I did it when uh, I got my mail. I didn't open my mail. It was my first... It was my first piece of mail that I got in Virginia Beach City Jail because I just got locked back up and I knew I was going to prison. I knew I was going to prison. There was no if, ands, or buts about it. I knew I was going to prison. But I was just starting my bid, okay? And I got my first letter and I could tell I had pictures in it. I told her I wanted pictures of my kids. And one thing that hurt me more than anything on this bid was being away from my children. You know, we had a bond. I love my babies, man, with all of my freaking heart. You know, that's just the kind of guy I am. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that's not like that. But me, I'm that kind of guy. I love my freaking kids, man. They are my everything. They are my world. They are my legacy. So when I got the mail, I knew that, uh, you know, I was going to be a little emotional because I was going to look at their pictures. But I didn't think I was going to cry or nothing, you know what I mean? 
So it was late at night, everyone was winding down, everyone was in bed, it was lockdown time, and I'm sitting out here on the boulevard in this little boat. A boat is like this big plastic thing that you put a mat in so you can sleep on. And wait, no, no, no. I didn't eat no Virginia Beach didn't even have a boat. I was sleeping on raw mat on the concrete floor. And because there was no bunks available when I first went into the block, I had to wait till you know someone got about the block. But uh I was laying in the bed and everyone was asleep. Okay. I opened up my envelope, I read the letter first, and you know, and I had two letters from my kids. You know, what I mean, they weren't they pretty much didn't know what they're writing or anything. They weren't old enough to know, but Brittany wrote it for them, you know, with the, with their help a little bit. And you could tell that it was kind of the help of her and them at the same time. But I read their letter and I read her letter and I started getting a little emotional, man. And then I looked at the pictures. They, she sent me pictures of me and my kids. As a matter of fact, I got them. Hold on, I'll be right back. Well, I got, I got two of them here. I'm not going to show one of them because... Uh, well, my baby ha has their shirt off, and there's a lot of sick individuals out there. I'm not going to show that. So I'm going to show this one. This one is of Kaylee. I'll never forget it, man. This one broke me down. It broke me down to tears. <laughs> I have a lick of facial hair on me, didn't I? <laughs> but look, look at that. Yeah, this is my baby girl right there. Huh? I have a lick of facial hair on me, man. But anyways, yeah. That picture right there, man, broke me the hell down. You know what I mean? But yeah, the crying that we're going to be talking about today is not that kind of crying, okay? Even if someone were to see me crying over those pictures, they would have respected why I was crying. You know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you a story right now about a guy that walked in. We're going to name him. <laughs> we're going to name him. On, we'll name him Freddy. No, Freddy ain't a good name. Let's name him, uh, let's name him Carl. Let's name him Carl. I never really liked Carl from The Walking Dead anyway. So let's name him Carl. If there's any Carls out there, I do apologize. Don't take it personal. Carl was an Italian individual, and he, uh, he had a clean cut. He had, like, a buzz cut on the side, and he had, like, a spiky hairdo. Uh, he looked like he had some money. A typical Virginia Beach-looking kid, you know what I mean? Or guy. He was a grown man. He was in jail. Now, this Carl guy, when he first came into the block, the correctional officers kind of had to push him into the block. He's, the first thing he said when he came in was to the, to the CO, he said, I can't do this, man. I can't do this. And someone hurt him. You know what I mean? So his little line that people picked on him for was, I can't do this, Carl. I can't do this. I can't do this. But his name wasn't Carl. You know what I mean? But everyone would always say, I can't do this to him. You know what I mean? And, and nag on him and pick on him. So after about two or three weeks of this guy getting picked on and nagged on, he started crying in the block, man. He started crying and he snapped as he was crying. And he snapped on the wrong damn dude. You know what I mean? And first off, you never cry. If, you, if people are picking on you, man, please do not ever cry. You know, and he did. But when he snapped, he snapped on this dude. He told him, he said, shut the hell up with tears in his face. I didn't see it. All I did was hear it. It's all I did was hear it, man. I was in the block talking to my homeboy. I'll never forget it, man. I was in the block talking to my homeboy about getting some rubber. Uh, I was looking for an eraser, and he was teaching me that you could use the rubber off your Jackie Chan shoes the state that you buy from the state as an eraser. I said, nah, man. So I ripped off a piece of rubber. I was erasing stuff. I said, damn. This is an eraser, you know what I mean? I'll never forget, but I, I heard the dude get smacked fire. I heard the popping sound, and everyone's like, ooh, ooh, and laughing, this, that, and third, carrying on. So I come out to sell. I'm like, what the hell happened, man? What the hell happened? And sure enough, I find out that Carl got smacked in the face with some baby powder. Baby powder, you know what I mean? So I walk around the pod a couple laps, and then I walk into his cell. I knew Carl. You know, I didn't mess with him like Tom. But every now and then, if I was bored as hell, I'd go down to his cell and talk to him about his freaking rich and lavish life, you know what I mean, and uh, I was walking around doing laps around the pod, and then finally I walked in there, I'm like, damn, Carl, what happened, man, he's like, I got smacked, man, he turned his head, <laughs> I never get it, man, look, Carl, Carl had a damn handprint on his face, right, he had the red print on his face, and remember I said he had black hair, the outline of fingers was in his black hair, and around it was still, was, there was still baby powder, <laughs> 
on baby powder, man. So I want the car. It's a damn car. You still got baby powder. Yeah, man. The man, baby powder flying all over the freaking place. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. But, the, yeah, he broke rule number one and two. He cried. You know, he cried. And he allowed someone to walk all over him. You know what I mean? And he got smacked the hell out of him. Damn, I know he will never forget that time for the rest of his life. Pure hell for that man. But anyways, that's the top five reasons why you might get picked on in jail. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you did. And also go check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, go check out my Patreon. Go check out my Teespring. Buy yourself some 23-in-1 merchandise. And more importantly, my Etsy page with all of my beautiful artwork. I'm going to have some new art pieces up in the next couple of days. I just had to ship out uh, the last of the packages to the people that ordered stuff. Now let me go get Lucy and show you what she looks like for Valentine's Day. And that reminds me, I got a crazy Valentine's Day special coming y'all's way tomorrow about some very crazy women. Whew. Crazy women. Might bring some crazy relationship stories your way as well. Who knows? But let me go get Lucy really quick. Come here, Lucy. Come here, girl. Let me put this on you. Prayed up, got me something for the girls, but I'll put it on Lucy. Come here, Lucy. Oh, watch it. Watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, here. Here. Hold <laughs> on. Right. Let me. Lucy gets Valentine's Day, baby. Look at her nails. She got her nails dead too. Did you, girl? <laughs> you smell. Ooh, you smell good, baby. Ooh. She got a bath. She got her nails done. Huh, Luce? Huh? She's a big girl. So a happy Valentine's Day special coming to y'all tomorrow. About a correctional officer killed her husband. So she could be with the inmate. <laughs> but yeah, Lucy here. Look at this pretty little bandana. I don't like all this pink on you. I don't like all this pink on you. Hmm? Look at them nails. Jeez, girl, you need to lose some weight, baby. Adios, amigos.